Russell's not going to answer my questions. Ultimately, he's going to answer that question. I would like to see if you could get an answer from Russell, what was removed from town hall in the midst of a lawsuit. Even though I'm back here at Hale's headquarters due to the bird aviary finally being constructed, this is exciting times. You know, it's also kind of sad that I care more about how birds live than the previous administration and council of Otter Creek care about how their people live. The battle still rages on in Otter Creek, and today you're going to find out what was in those boxes that Russell and Richard pulled out of town hall, if they're telling the truth. And you're going to find out a whole lot more. So I'm calling you to resign and never run for council again. This is your last chance where I'm gonna say, do the right thing. Do not place this town in any more legal liability. Show you the bills and the paper. Slide that down there. You saw that, right? Don refusing to recognize the new mayorship of Therese. He would not slide the gavel. I nominate Russell. This is the failure of the previous administration. So what is she, can I ask that? Ms. Preston is taking a written, writing the minutes down in this meeting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I didn't have nobody else to do it. And so she's, she's going to be my clerk for tonight. She's just less. taking minutes, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, I think she probably wants to apply for the job. And she has some experience in city government. I would recommend that uh, we consider her. You turned her down last time you made a boasting. First and foremost, I would like to gift this to the town of Otter Creek. So I, I have, um, I would like permission to actually WD-40 with grease lithium, the hinges, so that we can get rid of that noise. And Any mayor who antagonizes the membership that he's voted to actually represent would sue us. How much of a fool can you be to the position in the legal liability you've placed this town in now? now Where you have how many cameras on you right now? Don, your mayor doesn't even show he you the bills and the paper. Corrupt. He's not corrupt, huh? Okay, you're in the middle of a lawsuit. Those just don't come out of anywhere. You're in the lawsuit because of corruption. There was a legal records request made that no records, none whatsoever, have been given. As a matter of fact, I've made requests for over the past three years. I've yet to receive anything. Under whose authority and administration? That would be Russell Meeks Sr., that would be Laura Mott, and then Russell Meeks Sr. again. There in itself is corrupt. I've been lied to. I've been stolen from. I was given a fee for my... My actual water that nobody else paid. Let's go on even further. Let's see, I get late fees for bills that don't even arrive on time when the due date is there. Let's go on even further. There are items being carried out of town hall illegally during a lawsuit. Let's go on even further. Or is that enough? I mean, is there over a hundred videos already of the corruption? The fact that this individual doesn't even tell you what the bills are. The fact that this individual that you fight with for the past year on every single meeting front and every single time you're together, he's corrupt. He's wrong. You've said it yourself. He's wrong. It's not an emergency. There ain't no clerk. There ain't no show. Do you guys follow Sunshine Law? That is something that happens. Absolutely. We have to follow the Sunshine Law. Yes, the sunshine laws. In case you didn't catch that, Don, he broke all sunshine laws. And then he lied about it. He is corrupt. So I'm calling you to resign and never run for council again. This is your last chance where I'm going to say, do the right thing. Do not place this town in any more legal Actually, liability. That's what we should do. Let's, let's have a uh, forensic... Uh... Madam Mayor, thank you. <laughs> And fine, you, you said corruption for six months. Corruption, corruption. Show us one bit of corruption. Let's get a forensic audit in here. And you show me one, one instance of corruption. If you, if you show okay. it to you, are you going to resign? So. Don, your mayor doesn't even show he you the bills and the paper. Corrupt. Okay. <laughs> You you said that the I apologize for going over my that, time. That, uh, You're the one that, that threatened to actually sue him because he was doing it I wrong. I never threatened to sue him on this, but I was going to take this for as I'm capable so, of taking it. Yeah. Madam Mayor, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Yes, a comment. I do. 
Um, as an outsider coming from Port Charlotte, Florida, I just want you to know we watched you guys and I've looked at some of the bylaws in this town and I'm very politically correct. I go all over the country, all over the world, my husband and I. My husband's a, a veteran from the Navy and I own a small business in our small town. Navy. When I walk mm -hmm. this area and I've seen your charter and anybody that comes in here to invest in your area, it's scary. We just went to Cedar Creek to buy some property. We were looking here. The trash, it's scary. It really is a scary area. And that's the only reason why we come down here because it's beautiful, this area. We live in a big town and it's not, but this area is beautiful. And I, I would never invest in a town like that. And it's a really shameful because the people I've met here are amazing. The trees are beautiful. The land's beautiful, but the area is just not. This is the sad part. That's what they want. They don't want you to invest here. They don't want a community that is growing. They don't want a business that is paying taxes so they can have clean water. Now, the they that I'm speaking of are a small percentage of a small town, 100 people. Let's just round it to 100 people. You've got a handful of them that want control. They don't want to clean up their properties. They don't want somebody else coming in and running a business that generates income. These precious people drove over four hours one way to be here for this meeting, to look for property, to help an area prosper and grow. How can a community not want that so y'all probably should think about that yes thank you i'd like to address a previous meeting um i believe it was dan that brought up a motion about the speed limit sign and i read on the statutes on the speed limit sign there is a one where he wanted to put one already Okay, I believe under the statutes, it allows for you guys to, to vote it and motion it, whatever you gotta do, right? Uh, to put a bigger one. Mm -hmm. You don't need to replace the one that's there. It's in front of your property on, on the north side of 24, uh, right past Herschel's, right there by your property. There's already a 35 there, and then the other one's above Otter Creek Boulevard, Avenue Boulevard, whatever it is. Anyhow, uh, I believe the statutes allow for you to okay for that sign to be enlarged. Okay. Speed limits continue to be an issue in a town council meeting. First time I ever heard about speed limits, it was Stuart Stewart. Yeah, that's his name. He was complaining that he needed speed bumps and the town needed to pay for them out in front of his house because his cats were getting hit. The town isn't responsible for your cats you're responsible for your cats. If you don't want your cats to get hit, the town members aren't paying for speed bumps out in front of your house. Put your cats in your house and take care of them appropriately. Oh, and then there's Turtle Lady, who's stating that I go down the drive 65, 70 miles per hour and that her child is a runner and I know it and I'm going to kill her child. Um, you're responsible for your child, who you claim you have to be with 25-8 because she's so high needs. You are responsible for making sure she doesn't run out into the road. You control that. Why aren't you putting a gate up? Oh, wait, that's right. Uh, you finally did with a futon. You saw that, right? Futon frame, right in front of the drive, blocking FWC officer who is there to investigate the care of the animals. Okay, and if you do the opposite end towards where his property is coming in the opposite way from Cedar Key, that, that, it might help a little bit. That that's portion of our town is regulated by DOT. And the sign, as is, congested as the area is, and the sidewalk down that side, you're not really allowed to put such a big, too big of a sign because you're actually block, obstructing the view of mm -hmm. potential. You know. Well, it might have to be. I know that in the statute, though, there's a offsetting rules, and yeah. you'd have to get into it with DOT, but I believe you can put up a larger sign there. 
Listen, I, so, I, I, yeah. agree, I agree with him 100%. They go down the stop sign. People rush, race down that uh, road like I don't crazy know what the, the exact dimensions are. They're really going into it. it. Yeah. They're largely ignored. Okay, yeah. so I don't think the slides are going to Well, I'm sure we can certainly check into Do anything. Yeah. And, and other signs like, you know, when you're going into Bronson, there's a nice welcome to Bronson type sign. Yeah. See if we can get something like that, maybe even donated. Right. You know? I uh, agree. See if, I've, uh, Scott I've commented and, on that and, myself. And, uh, that Ellie would be might. beautiful to put a nice welcome to Otter Creek sign in. Ot. Ot. O-T-T. They're saying Otter Creek. Despite the ridiculous rumors from the locals, there is no way I have authority or any sway or pull to change the name of a town to Odd, O-D-D. It's welcome to Otter Creek. And yeah, it's an odd place. It's an extremely odd place, but I love it. And if somebody is willing to sell me a parcel, they're doing a lot of work back there. Where people, yep, they're, they're still going. But it's going to be interesting to see that bird aviary. <laughs> if somebody wants to sell me a parcel, where people drive through when they come into town. I'll do the construction. I'll pay for the sign. I'll put it up. Or the town can put it up. I don't mind. I'll donate the land so that we can welcome people to a beautiful place. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about beautification yes. and stuff like that. I'm a lifelong resident of Levy County, and my grandmother was actually born in the house down there on the corner. Oh. So I just want to give you guys some advice. Years ago, we had a county commissioner who committed a federal crime and they went to federal prison. So I don't ever want that to happen to anybody. So I'm gonna give y'all a couple of key points that I've looked at. Anytime y'all rush to pay bills and there's no receipts, there's no information on what the bills are, it looks deceptive to the public. Mm -hmm. That's why anytime you guys rush to pay bills, you should always have a printout of what the bills are. It's a small community, it's not hard. Mm -hmm. Anywhere there is money being exchanged should be under camera, should always, you need to be seeing who's paying their bills because it's for an audit. It doesn't matter if that's the only person in there or if it's out here. As a government building, there should be cameras on the outside. You've had a house that burnt last year. You've had a trailer that was stolen a couple of months ago or a couple of days ago. You guys should always have cameras in this building right now to watch and see if somebody's taking anything off the top. Because it can happen. Somebody can be going through a hard time. There should be a camera. Charlie, I couldn't agree more. There should be cameras everywhere. And Otter Creek right now has about 10 to 15 cameras pointed on it in this particular meeting. And there are people who have fallen on tough times. I've shared in a previous video, our own previous mayor, Russell Meeks Sr., at a bare minimum, two times foreclosed two times declared bankruptcy. That's not okay with me, entrusting somebody with the town's money when they couldn't manage their own. It's already been shown that backflow is happening when the um, water pressure drops. There's maybe pipes in some of these houses that have lead-based. Some of that lead-based water could be going back to citizens right now. All it would take would somebody have like a filter on their house and put fentanyl in it, and it backflow into the system. That's why y'all should be really looking at a grant or something to put check valves on every single person's line. That way it also saves on the pressure, it saves on the pumps. You're not burning out your equipment, but you're also ensuring that everybody's bill is correct and that it's not because you have filters that are, your pumps are weak or they're old. You basically protect your people by a $30 part for everybody. And what's that, $3,000? It would cost less than $10,000 for this community. I'll donate the money for it if you will do it for the people. I so, will give the money for it if you will do it for all the people. We better think about that. A legal backflow preventer runs around $300. Or more. But okay, I'm thinking I'm spending $50,000 on birds. And I'll never make that money back. I will get breakfast, but um, can you imagine what I would actually do for real people? Birds mean very little in life. People mean everything. I don't have to think about it. I already said I would do it. And not even that. I don't need to do it. You have grant money for your water. 
It should have already been done. Somebody in the community shouldn't have to step up and go, I'll do it. It literally should have already been done under the previous administration. But just just that point that you may have old pipes in this town because there's houses from 1918 here. And they may be back from one. Has anybody ever seen somebody who has cancer because of lead poisoning? It's possible that you may have a neighbor in the last 20 years maybe drinking back from the water from an old house. They may have a new trailer, new house, but their neighbor has an old house. So it's just being aware that what you are drinking may be coming back from somebody who didn't upgrade their pipes. Um, the last, you can go on Google Earth, you can go on Google Maps, and you can look at this place from 2008. I think this out here is part of a historic society. Drive around in 2008 on Google Maps and look at how beautiful this place used to be. I know there's some people that are getting older and the houses, you know, they may not be able to take care of their property. There's people that are willing to help. You even have a school down here and some of these kids probably could use some community service hours if you really asked them to, to help around the community. Hey, maybe all it's gonna cost is somebody to donate gas, donate a push mower. You know, it would look so much, so beautiful. My grandma died almost a year ago and her favorite thing was Otter Creek. She was a Moody. If you've ever heard about anything about the Moody's, they used to own the store down there, Herschel's, before Herschel's did it. Herschel's is the corner store right across the street from the post office. It's like the only two things that you see in the intersection of Otter Creek. A flashing light, Herschel's with bait, and, um, you know, you could get some snacks and you can get some, you know, some drinks in there as well. I don't go there personally because I don't want to pay the inflated prices. And they have every right to inflate their prices. It's their business. Well, I tell you, there's a lot going on back there. It's their business. They can charge whatever they want and people can pay whatever they want to pay for what they buy. I'm just not one that frequents there often. But... It's amazing to me that it's the only real store that's left in the area and that people would fight against putting something new in. Why? Why can't this place be what it once was? Why can't it be what Charlie's grandma remembered it so fondly as? Why don't the people want to do and be better? And, you know, it comes to me that, but you don't even have anybody that would put in a, anything because there's there's no there's no property to put in it. Well, really, no, I'm saying it is it a market study you know it just would not be profitable but, you can't get anybody to, to right. invest but, that but, kind of investment but you, asked, right. so right. so you, you asked them. about the boat but let me, let me give us reasons why he's saying that let me let me say this real quick there's a boat down there there's two things on point out about the property around the board of county commissioners and i know they just put a sign up it's the first time i've ever seen the board of county commissioners put a sign up that says don't come on this property, Board of County Commissioners, right on 19. I just seen it come up. And maybe it's because they are now pushing down, doing the helipad, cleaning up, and they don't want anybody out there in the equipment. One, you guys should push for a satellite dump station. There's nothing for you guys. You have to go all the way to Bronson. You have 400 families, people, that could be utilized. Push the county commissioners to get a dump station out here so you don't have to go to Bronson to go all the way to the dump. You should really push for that, and you would also help the citizens of, you know, Gulf Hammock or Inglis that, that don't go to Bronson. That's what I would suggest is talk to the county commissioners about seeing if you can get that. But the sad thing is right on the back side of that property, the Cutover Road, I guess it's where the train station or depot used to be, there is a boat that is right on, you know, right on the edge of the road. It's been there for over 30 years. It's its own county easement. And this town has never looked at pulling up. It's got a tree growing up in it. Nobody has ever looked at, why why are we mowing right here and nobody has ever pulled this boat off? It's sticking out. Oh, that's what county easements are for. People aren't allowed to park on my property or do drugs on my property. It's for boats and for planting trees in the boats. You'll have to excuse me. I'm still new to Otter Creek. I've only been here three years. I'm not up on all these boat planting things. It's a planter. And um, yeah. actually, a lot of people <laughs> like it and but go well, and take photos of it. I know. How do you explain to people that people aren't there taking photos of it because it's a good thing? People are literally taking photos of it because it's a horrific, ridiculous thing. 
Nobody goes down there and go, wow, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. They go past it and go, I cannot believe this place has this here. People taking pictures of it is not a positive thing. You can't turn this around and go, well, people like it. They're taking pictures of it. They're taking pictures of it because they're ridiculing you. You're ridiculing the town. They're in disbelief that a town would allow this to be there for 30 years. But I just took one. What I'm saying is you have properties where it's just junky. And I know a lot of people want to like, they don't want to clean their property because they think it's going to keep the property taxes low. You know, it's sad when you have a historic, society, a historic area and it's just junked up. You know, it's, it's really, if you live in town, there's usually a code enforcement. You know, and that's what I'm saying. Otter Creek does have code enforcement. Normally, a county would be enforcing the code, but no, because we're incorporated as a town, even as small as a town as we are, the code enforcement comes from the council. And who's trying to control the council? People such as Russell, people such as Don. Are their properties trashed? Absolutely, 100%. I've shown you a video from 10 years ago at a town council meeting where his own daughter, Russell's own daughter, Charlene, is calling him out for trashing the town. In her words, not mine, this place is a ghetto. No families, no businesses would ever want to come here. Why? Because of people like Russ the Sus, people like Don the Con. It's wall right there in front of you. They're in charge of code enforcement. Why do they want to be on council? So that they don't have to clean up. This is what blows my mind the most. They think it's freedom, freedom to do whatever they want. Uh, when your freedoms overlap on my freedoms, there's consequences. Let's talk about that. You got First Amendment rights, freedom of speech, right? You have the freedom to say anything you want. And if you defame me or slander me or libel me, you have that same freedom to pay the consequences for it. There are consequences to your freedoms. When you do something illegal in your freedom of your right of speech, you pay for it legally in the long run. And there are freedoms that you have as landowners. And there are consequences in the bills and the paper. Corrupt. You don't think so, Don? Corruption is an action of doing and an inaction of not doing. Your mayor and you are both in corruption because you're not doing what you are legally supposed to do. And by the way, I can sue you for that. You're not doing what you legally are supposed to do. Code enforcement. That's corruption. Oh, let's bring in a few other things. Um, oh, what? that's right. Your mayor pulls permits illegally from people he doesn't like. That's corruption. You know, you already know he's corrupt. You're part of it, or you wouldn't be protecting him. Yes. Okay. Back to the WC3 grant. Okay. We're talking about um, getting water from Bronson. Is that what this grant is? It's an interlocal agreement to start the process of it. Russell knows okay, more so about we're that. doing that. What is going to happen with our new plant? Is it going forward, or are we now considering? joining Bronson since they're going to Cedar Key. Let me clear this up for you, like clean water that we don't have. And that's the issue. Otter Creek doesn't have clean water. We have wells and the wells bring up water that is unclean. And then we treat it and treat it and treat it and treat it. And frankly, we make it even more unclean by all the treating and the chemicals. So what's happening is a town that's about oh, 15 minutes east of Otter Creek. They have nice, fresh, sweet water in the Florida aqueducts, and it's good. And Cedar Key, which is another 15 minutes west of Otter Creek, they have horrible water because they're right on the Gulf. They're salt in it, muck, everything. They have money. Otter Creek doesn't. Cedar Key wants that fresh water from Bronson. Hey, Otter Creek residents want fresh water too. They're going to run a fresh water pipe right across the street, right in front of, right through Otter Creek. We might as well get some of that fresh water too. Don't you think? The people deserve it. And in the past, Russell has destroyed attempts to actually get the fresh water. Now we have a real opportunity to get real clean water. This, this is something that could happen in the next year. And if it does, the grant would be revoked 
are reverted. And I think that, that we need to look into uh, the, the, the sincerity of this actually, ha not this one, but ac this actually happening. And if it does, our, our system is still going to have to work. And it's just, we're just, all we're doing is just, we're just getting a source of clean water. And it's got to go through our system and be pumped and distributed by our system. It's not going to come in and take over our system. Our system has still got to be updated and kept up and keep going and, uh, and maintained. Right. It's just going to make it so that it's going to cut out a lot of, of extra stuff that we don't have to do if we can get the water clean in the first place. Right, it becomes a substation in essence. Yeah, basically, yeah. And, 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 and that way we'll keep the balance pressures correct. And now we can actually focus on the, uh, uh, the back, black flow, back flow valves that we put in all these things, the things that we, we can focus on those things versus spending money on what we could get through this process here. You know, it's, it's, it is, it's a very good thing, it is no doubt. It'd be an absolutely incredible thing for the people. Not for Russell, though, because Russell wants to lord over power over water, which is the only idea and thought that I have of why he keeps trying to kill all the deals in the past. Now, this isn't Jeremy Hale saying that he's killed the deals. I've shown you the fire marshal in Chiefland specifically calls him out and says, you killed the deal. It was because of you, I was there. And then Russell plays, oh, I don't, I don't remember any of that. The blame game. Never happened. Now, we need Russell out, we need clean water in. He's got a two-inch pipe. Right. Thanks for bringing that up. But, the, but the, the residential meter one isn't that expensive. And it is something, it is required, and it's been required all along. I believe it was in one of the grants previously. It just never, they, they run out of money on it, but they've never put it back into the process of the grants. Mm. Uh, you know, it just kept getting shorted and pushed aside. Yeah. But it definitely needs to be put in there to the, Barbie? Yeah. Council members, that Southwest Fifth Avenue Road right here in the, in the city of Lambert, can we still about in the future maybe getting that little short piece paved or some rock hold on it? Get rid of them potholes down there by Joy's house, or I know it belongs to the county, even though it's in the city. Right. As but they paid one in Chiefland going to the trailer park they built behind the wall bar. That was the county road. And they paid it due to the dust. Right. That, I, I don't that know if we get a plane. I don't know if we can get a plane to pave it for the, as far as the town goes. The county is only the source for that. That's what we talk about. See if y'all can get to right. the county to do it. But if it, during the meantime, I think that we could probably find money somewhere for somebody, or even if it's donated, for the lime rock, so we can actually patch the roads and use it. I got a I, we can just I, get the material. Someone was just asking me about my equipment earlier. It's on pilots. About, I've got equipment at the house that I use on, on job sites all the time. It's when I'm not, not in use. No, you were asking about the equipment outside. I'm saying I have equipment that we, I can actually bring oh. it. We can grade these roads with it when we get the line rock. That's the only road on the creek that's not paved. Yeah. 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 Everything else done being paved. Yeah, put you some millings down. We're keeping up. I'll have to pave it because I've already asked that question yeah. for the county commission. Yeah. yeah, the county yeah. doesn't really allow the millings, even on driveways, attached to the, on your aprons and stuff to, yeah. the, to the right of ways. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a, it's a liability. But that's what I was told about. I asked about why well, don't they mill the whole thing? And they said, oh, they have to pave it then. Huh. I said, that'd be a good thing there, too. Yeah. I hate to stand up because I can't. You don't have to, boss. I'm we'll not going to try. You. We'll listen to you anytime you want I'm to. I'm going to try to be very calm this time because I've been sitting here listening to a whole bunch of crap. And here it what is water, my wife is clear. As mayor, worked on the water problem for almost 16 years. My concerns are, and I think most of them have already been addressed, about the town looking like a ghetto and the town council not doing anything to fix this, nor is anyone ever going to want to move here to improve our town or make it where there's more people to compensate or justify this water issue. And got no results from Chiefman or Bronson, and also got a grant sent to us here that was used by you people, maybe not you, but other people who were sat there and went, and you were about to lose the next one. That's how close you are now. The grant that you have now, you're going to lose. Okay? 
you're going to keep it up because it's all wet for clean. As far as the water goes, I haven't drank this water since the day I moved in here. Me either, but unfortunately and wrongly, I've been putting it in my mouth to brush my teeth, and that's done a ton of damage. Especially when I put six dark black shirts in my laundry, and they came out white. So I know not to touch this water. Even my cats die from the water. I've had dogs die from the water. And you're sitting here talking about water and this and the other thing. All right, pipes are in the ground. They're bad. You know it. I know it. It's about time to do something about that. And you're going to pay, you're going to make us pay big money for this water, which I got a couple of months ago, $1,500 bill for water. Where the hell did I use $1,500? Wow. You tell me. I can tell you where it came from. She did it to me, too. We need money. How much are we going to get? But the reality is it was Russell. It was Russell shutting the system down, putting in pumps, putting in filters. He did it to everybody. They are stealing money from the people. The bills and the paper. Rough. But claiming innocence. And you, know, you got stuff piled all over your, your land over there. Talking about, oh, how bad it looks in this town. There's stuff all over the place. It's piled here, piled there. It's yours. It's mine. It's everybody here. So it's about time to either do something drastic or leave it alone. People are tired of listening to all this crap. Right? I know I am. If you listened real well, you heard Don say, it's called freedom. All right. You know what? I know I bought the schoolhouse in Outer Creek, and I never thought I was going to have to teach these people laws and, and everything as far as education. Number one, it's not freedom, okay? You don't have the right to junk up your property. You don't. You have the right to act as code enforcement, as a council, and make sure properties aren't junked up. And now you're going to go, well, it's democracy. Let me give you another lesson. You don't live in a democracy. Let's say this together. I... Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands. You don't live in a democracy. You live in a republic. And as such, you have rules and you have guidelines. And yeah, you got some freedoms, but those freedoms come with consequences as well. The freedom you have, Don, is to ensure that Russell cleans up his dump. To ensure that Turtle Lady cleans up her dump. For the prosperity, well, let's back up. To ensure you clean up your dump for the prosperity of the entire community. It's not about your freedom. It's about the community and the town as a whole and us living in a healthy place. Not with garbage everywhere. In a healthy environment. It blows my mind that Don would even bring up freedom. Particularly because he robbed me of my freedom during my public comment. The Supreme Court protected my right to criticize Don and to criticize Russell, which he then went on to say, if the quorum exists and we don't allow it, wrong. Your word and your quorum do not trump the Supreme Court ruling. You are a fool who just incriminated yourself as corrupt as well. You broke the law, and if I wanted to, I could sue you personally for you cutting me off and not hearing out my public comment. You don't understand what freedom is. You don't know what the law is. You're just as corrupt as your buddy Russ there, Don the Con. And the, and the next thing in line, you and her ran these three for the last hour or so. You ran the meeting. They said nothing. They sat over there like bumps on a log. I hate to say this, but it's the truth. Could you clarify that? What? Could you clarify that? Yeah. You sat there while they ran the meeting. They ran you. the meeting, not you guys. You sure you got into a fight with Jerry? But who the hell knows? I get in a fight with him all the time. Hales. Who the Hales? The hell, yeah. Yeah, there you go. The <laughs> I'm not a fighter. I'm a lover. Okay. I think he had a comment. Yeah, what I'd like to say, my name's Charles Larry Watson Jr. My mom grew up here in school here. My aunt and uncle owned Herschel's. I lived there in 1973 after my uncle died. 
So I was at one time a residence here, and I have seen this town, poof. I live in Gulf Hammond. I've seen it go bust, went gone away. Otter Creek is our neighbor. I'd like to see this town work together and come back up. Now, I mean, there's a lot of good people here. There's, there, there's a lot of people around here that's got skeletons in their closet, and I can bring them out. You don't want me bringing them out. It was at that point that somebody in the crowd said, Bring them out! Bring them out! You want to hear about skeletons? One of Russell's own family members is giving me information to dig up on him on the inappropriateness and the power that he used as mayor over some of the people for gross inappropriateness. So y'all guys work together. When a, a, somebody comes in and y'all don't like them and they're here to help, for God's sakes, may, may the Lord bless y'all. An angel has been sent here and people don't realize it. That's all I'm saying. You didn't have to call me an angel. <laughs> Must have been talking about George. Does anybody else have any comments? Madam Mayor, I have one more well, comment. I find it odd that odd I never thought that way before. Hey, it's Otter Creek. Uh, Otter Creek has a hundred residents, mm -hmm. so more or less, and thirty percent of the residents have one physical address. You know, to me, that's very odd. Mm -hmm. It's also very odd that you have five councilmen, and uh, with one with the very least amount of experience, even day one, it, all of a sudden becomes the mayor. I mean, I'm not saying that you're not gonna be a good mayor. I find that very odd. You have four people who are with all kinds of uh, council experience and uh, someone who's never had a day. I find it very odd. <laughs> yeah, Don, I'm saying odd too. That you can't understand that uh, a campground, which is a legal place of residence, exists in Otter Creek. And that's why there's so many residents. They live permanently on a campground. And to be clear, it wasn't 30%. Um, I believe in the election results, there were 17 votes that came from the campground out of a total of 72, I believe, if I'm doing my math right now. Uh, I'm not sure what that percentage is, but maybe we can call Mary and ask her. Yeah, well, I, I just believe that, that everybody much. should work together <laughs> to make this successful. That's you're what missing, I believe. You're missing my point. The audience there are plenty of other people living in here. And one physical address. And you've been on the board for 30 years and nothing's changed. How many? You don't know what's changed around here. Let's just work together. We can't work together. Don, you're missing your own point. I'm just saying it's very odd. There's lots of things in this world that are odd. You're missing your own point, Don. You're missing your own point. No, I'm not. The people in this town want change. They don't want the same old thing going on. You mean 30% of the people live in one and one in a physical address? I don't know 30% of the people in the town. Well, I, know, you know, I know what democracy is, you know. Don just failed his classes at what the Hales Education Institution here in Otter Creek at the old schoolhouse. I am failing him, holding him back for another year of education because he still doesn't understand. He doesn't live in a democracy. He lives in a republic. And as such, there are consequences, and it's for the greater good of the people. And you want to know what's odd? Him, who spends a year fighting Russell and now votes for him for mayor and then vice mayor. What does Russell have on you, Don? We want to know. I don't need a lecture on that, believe me. Well, I mean, all people in this town are the people in this town. It doesn't matter whether they live on this street or Everyone that street. Everyone who lives here was welcome to vote. Pardon? Everyone who lives in this town was welcome to vote, were they Absolutely. not? Absolutely, but it's just odd that they all, 20, 30% oh, have good. one address. I have one more comment that I think is extremely important, if I may. So, Madam Mayor, unfortunately, due to the activity and antagonizing by the former mayor, Russell Meeks Sr., you now find yourself in a lawsuit. 
The town of Otter Creek is in a lawsuit. Oh, and your former mayor, Russell Meeks Sr., has been filmed with Richard, your maintenance man, removing items from the town hall. The current lawsuit is all about records. Public records. This is the one job of a town clerk. They are the legal term is a custodial of the records. It's like the biggest thing in the world, especially in Florida, that all the people have all the access to all the information. That's it. And that's what it is. It's all about access to information. Anybody in the town could have filed a lawsuit as well to get the access to the information. Anybody. We all are allowed to have the access to the information. That's the lawsuit. Turtle Lady claims that she put in a request for all the same information that I did. And yet she wants the job as town clerk. Do you think that's a conflict of interest that she's requesting all the information that I have requested in my information requests and document requests, but now she wants to be the town clerk? You think that might be a little bit of a conflict of interest? The answer is no, there is no conflict of interest. All the information is to be opened for all of the people. Period. And you may go, well, well, what if they get addresses? My goodness, you can go on the auditor's website and get everybody's address. The world has all of my addresses. Like, I really care. The world has everybody's address. You can get it in a matter of moments on Google. In other words, it's not even possible to have a conflict of interest because all of the information, regardless of who works in that office, is public information. It's always for the public to the public. There is no aspect of conflict of interest in any way, shape, or form. It can't happen because the information is open to the public for everyone all the time. So all of that is on camera. Nobody knows what those items are per se in the midst of a lawsuit. Now, obviously, Russell's not going to answer my questions. Ultimately, he's going to answer that question. I would like to see if you could get an answer from Russell, what was removed from town hall in the midst of a lawsuit? Um, what form of work? That, that doesn't, that doesn't, that's not public comment. He says it's a personal we don't have something else. We don't, we don't Thank you for asking. I make a motion we adjourn this meeting. Of course you do. You make a motion to adjourn every time somebody has something against you. Did you I have a public comment. Go ahead. Because I was directed in his comments. What's wrong with my address? Are you taking exception that I live in RV? Not one bit. Not one bit. If you, if that's the way you take it, then I don't know how you well, take on that one thing. address. You get. No, I'm saying of. one address. I'm, I don't I know don't if you know. live in a tent or if you live in an RV or oh, one of those cabins. I don't know. Man, it doesn't man. matter. Just so I understand, Don, you made a big deal about it, but now it doesn't matter. I find that odd. I find that very odd. I hear a motion. Yeah. Second. Yes. Is everyone in agreement? To join the meeting. All right. Once people head out of here, we're going to go ahead and WD 40 those hinges. But uh, I don't think this party's over yet. This is white lithium grease. Let's work it in a little bit. Here, come on in. Come on in. We're going to have to get. Oh, it's starting to work already. Look at that. It's working. Okay, we're going to get the other side here. Bring Okay, probably that paint that went over there. Okay, here we go. Real test, we gotta work it. Oh my goodness! The door does not squeak anymore! The door doesn't squeak! The door doesn't squeak anymore! I ain't tarring that one. <laughs> Look at that. Wow! The best board meeting ever. Council meeting, council meeting. I think your wife would be proud. I think Clea would be proud. She has worked her tail off on that water all the time. She did, she worked. She, did. she tried She tried to better this time. I know because I drove it. Yeah, let's turn it. Somebody's right, calling. Now turn it the other way. That lock. Yeah. Okay, here's your. They do got caller ID. They do got caller ID. <laughs> Madam Mayor, you got mail? Yes, it's addressed to the new mayor. Okay. And do you need to call anybody? 
I don't. Okay, <laughs> all right. I skizzered just, it myself. Just kept scissors, okay. I've seen Amazon packages like this before. So. What is it? Parliamentary motion oh simplified. My goodness. Oh, that's that's actually that's very applicable. That's a that's a good gift. Whoever sent that, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank we you. We will need this. And, and package number two, number two to the new okay. mayor. Wow. Is Roberts Rules of Order newly revised in brief? Wow. <laughs> thank you very much. These will come in very handy for us. Madam Mayor. What do you need for help for Otter Creek, the fan base of What the Hales? What they, what could they do to help you in Otter Creek? Um, if we have anybody that knows anything about clerk business, we have a big mess in the clerk's office, <laughs> and we need to get that figured out. This is no joke. That office is a dump. I've seen it. It's horrible. It's horrific. It looks like some of the properties in Otter Creek. And so, all joking aside... Otter Creek needs help. If you have experience as a clerk and you would be willing to volunteer time, and if you're willing to put in a resume for the position of town clerk, we need your help. Can you help us make Otter Creek great again?